Okay, so let's start with, as we look at natural log some more here, let's start with a little bit uh, of review again. If I wanted to expand ln of x minus 2 squared over radical x squared plus 1, how would I do that? Okay, minus ln of x squared plus 1 to the 1 half, and then, there we go, 2 times ln of x minus 2, minus a half times ln of x squared plus 1. By the way, notice, if I were doing derivatives, as we're going to, notice how much easier it would be to do ln of x minus 2 than it would be to have to do ln and do a big old nasty quotient rule in there. Okay? So you can actually save yourself a lot of trouble by simplifying it first and then doing a derivative. Okay? All right, uh, let's say we wanted to put this one together all into one big log. So ln of something. Good. Over the square root of 2x cubed minus 1. Okay. So this comes in, that makes it a square root. The 2 comes in, that's where we get the square. Okay, the things that are added are on top. The things that are subtracted go on the bottom. Okay? All right, so... That brings us down to looking a little bit more closely at this idea of E, okay? The ln of E, natural log of E. Now, what is natural log of E equal? What well, equals 1? You guys know that, all right? You know ln of E is 1 because E to the first power is E. But here's another... Uh, way of representing that using an integral, okay? E is the integral from 1 to E of 1 over t dt, okay? Now, why is that the case? Well, it's the case because of, um, as we'll see, the derivative of natural log is 1 over t. The integral of 1 over t is the natural log. Okay, um, so we'll get to more of that later. But let's let's uh, get used to some of this. So if we have ln of x, if x is one over e to the third, what would ln of that be? Negative three. Okay, it'd be negative three because. The natural log of e to the negative third power is e is negative 3, okay? How about 1 over e squared? It would be negative 2. How about 1 over e? Negative 1. Negative 1. How about e to the 0? 0 or 1. 0 or 1. ln of 1, if it's e to the 0, ln of 1 is e. It's 0. It's 0. What's the power here? The power is 0. Remember, a log gives you an exponent. So what's the exponent? The exponent is 0. Okay? Exponent is 0. How about uh, ln of e? 1. ln of e squared is 2. Okay, so you guys know how to use your calculator, so I'm going to skip that part, okay? But let's take a look at our rule here for the natural log function. Here we're officially getting it. We've mentioned this a little bit in the last couple of days. 
the derivative of natural log. This is a rule that you just need to know from here on out. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Okay, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Note the domain here. You cannot take ln of 0. You can't take ln of a negative number. So the domain is x has to be greater than 0. That's just based on the graph, right? Because That's based on the graph. That's Yeah, that's the domain of the log function is it has to be greater than 0. Okay? Now, you also have here if it's ln of a function. We have the chain rule, okay? So ln of the function is the derivative of the outer function. The derivative of the outer function is derivative of ln, so it's 1 over the u. Then chain rule, we multiply by du dx, okay? To put it in simpler terms, this du dx is the same as u prime. So 1 over u times u prime is u prime over u. That's kind of the easy way to remember, okay? Now notice this is still true up here because what is x, what is the derivative of x? It's one, okay? So it's one over the x, right? So there's our derivative for the natural log function. Now we're finally doing some calculus, okay? So, Let's check this out. If I want to find the derivative of ln of 2x, the u is 2x, that's the inner function. So what's the derivative of that? 2. two. So I put 2 over the 2x. So that's just 1 over x. Okay? Here we have b. It's ln of x squared plus 1 that we're taking the derivative of. 2x over x squared. Okay, so the derivative of the inside, the u prime, is 2x over the x squared plus 1. Okay. What do we need to use for this? No. This is an integration. Oh, product. Product, product rule. Yeah. By the way, we have to shift gears in our heads a little bit. We've been doing integration for a while. Got to shift gears back to derivatives for a little bit. Okay. So, product rule, u prime v plus uv prime. So, u prime is 1 times ln, not h, ln of x plus u times v prime. What's v prime? Well, one, over. 1 over x. So we have ln of x plus 1. All right, one more here. ln of x cubed. Okay. Here we have a function and a function. What's on the inside? The ln of x, right? So, if I'm taking the derivative of the outside, what's that? Yeah, 3 times ln of x squared. And then times the derivative of ln of x. So times 1 over x. Okay, so it's all the same old rules. This one new one, we just got to be careful. Okay, also note here that the entire ln is being squared, not just the x. Okay, so that's what we, how we could write our final answer. Okay. Now, another thing that you can do here is you can simplify. Okay. Now, if I were to do this just using the u prime over u, which would be totally fine if we did, 
I could find f prime by doing the derivative of the radical x plus 1. So I'd have 1 half x plus 1 to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which in this case is just 1. And that would all be over the radical x plus 1. Now, if I simplify that, since I have a half, I can bring the 2 down. I have an x plus 1 to the negative half, so I can bring that down. And that's going to make this whole thing 1 over 2 times x plus 1 to the first. Because I, I already have a half power down there. I bring down the other half, and I've got an x plus 1 to the first power. Okay? So that's a lot of kind of working there that we have to do. If instead, what? Does the ln just disappear? Well, I took the derivative. The derivative of ln of u is u prime over u. Oh. Okay. If instead I rewrite this, this is x plus 1 to the 1 half. I'm going to make this 1 half ln of x plus 1. So when I take the derivative, f prime of x, I've got 1 half times, now when I do u prime over u, the derivative of x plus 1 is simply 1, and that's over the x plus 1. So you'll notice I get here, but the mental gymnastics I've got to go through are a lot easier, okay? And that's especially the case when I have something like this. I'm not going to do this the hard way, okay? Because I don't feel like it. Um, I don't want to do the product rule with the chain rule on the top and then the chain rule on the bottom as I'm doing the quotient rule just to get the u prime. And then i got to put it all over this mess on top of that, okay? Number one, it's way too much work. Number two, I'm going to get something that, let's say I want to go ahead and find critical points later on. It's going to give me a real mess to try to solve. On the other hand, if I rewrite this as ln of x plus 2 times ln of x squared plus 1 minus a half times ln of 2x cubed minus 1, that's going to be a whole lot easier to take the derivative of. Okay? And the reason is because I have much simpler things inside the logs. The u's are much simpler. So the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x plus 2 times. The derivative of the inside is 2x over the inside x squared plus 1 minus a half times the derivative of the inside is 6x squared over the inside 2x cubed minus 1 and there we go there's our derivative it's still not all that pretty but it's going to be a whole lot that was a whole lot easier than the alternative okay so um, you know, we can simplify a little bit. 4x over x squared plus 1. The half cancels with the 6, and I got a 3x squared over 2x cubed minus 1. So there's my derivative. Didn't really take me all that long to do. All right, so, um, let's go ahead and work through... Uh, an example that actually has some application to it. We want to first of all find the equation of the tangent at the point 0, 4. So to get the equation of the tangent, that's the equation of a line, I have a point, all I need is the slope of that tangent line, which is going to be f prime of 0. Okay? So of course I need to find f prime first. So, derivative of 4 is 0, minus 2x, 
minus, and then I have the derivative of the inside over the inside. So it's one half over one half x plus one. Okay? Don't worry about simplifying because the simplified form is not the point of this. The point is to get the slope. So now all we have to do is plug in our zero. So it's negative 2 times 0 minus a half over 1 half times 0 plus 1. So all this comes out, this is 0, and I've got a negative 1 half over 1. So negative 1 half. So that's my slope. Now I can get my, the equation of my uh, line. y minus 4 equals negative 1 half x minus 0. So y equals a negative 1 half x plus 4. Okay? Now, if we graph... If we graph this on our calculators, let's go ahead and get our calculators out. Okay, so let me get rid of this part here. All right, so we've got. Uh, We've got 4 minus x squared minus ln of the square root of, oh, not a square root, of just a half x plus 1. Okay, I'll go ahead and zoom, and then I also put in the equation of my line negative one-half x plus four. Let's do zoom standard. See what that looks like, okay? That's kind of a cool looking graph. And here comes our tangent line. Oh, there we go. We know the slope of our tangent line is a negative one-half. Let's double check that using second calculate. We're going to calculate the derivative, number 6, of this curve at 0. And notice dy dx does indeed equal a negative 0.5. Okay? So, there we go. Remember that the natural log function is used in many, many real-life um, modeling examples, okay? Anytime we're talking about continuous growth, we're, we're using log functions, all right? So being able to then find a rate of change um, is going to be particularly useful as we adapt it and apply this calculus to those types of models, okay?